Hi, I'm your math prof, Barbara Rademacher, and I'm at home right now, so you're going to see my dogs behind me moving, and you're going to see I've got a bed with orange sheets, but that ought to all work out okay. Um, we're going to do a linear regression, okay? And this is typically what a linear regression looks like right here. You've got a bunch of data and the whole reason to do this is you're trying to see uh, are these data related in any meaningful way. So you need to get your calculator out, okay? And if you don't have your calculator out, why don't you pause now, uh, pause the, the video now and go get your calculator and bring it back and I am going to be taking you step by step through what you need to do to live through a linear regression and do your own. Okay, pause now, go get your calculator. Okay, you're back. I'm going to assume you're back. I'm going to turn on my calculator and I have to hit it twice. Notice that the keys over here uh, print to let you know what steps I took. Well, that's my calculator that has to do that on-on thing, and yours might not. Okay, now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press the second key and uh, follow the cursor. I'm going to push second, and you get that little arrow thing when you push the second key and I'm going to come down here to zero and if you look closely over the zero key you have the word catalog that's what I'm going to push second I already pushed second catalog which is zero and now I'm going to push my down button and go down 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 I'm going to go real fast if it will until I hit the D's and then I'm going to slow down because I'm looking for a word that starts with D. In particular, I want this diagnostic on. Once you have your arrow key next to diagnostic on, I want you to hit the enter key and hit it again. Now, you've just turned your diagnostics on. All right, I want you to write down the keystrokes that you had to take or just play the video over anytime you want. Um, and then I'm going to clear, okay, I'm going to clear. So you might want to stop the video right now so that you can see the keys. And um, yeah, we're just going to do this. And I'm going to hit clear so that I can go on. Oh, but it's not clearing. Doggone, I'm going to have to pause the video. How about that? Hi, I'm back. Okay. Now, this is what I'm going to do. What we just did, well, I'll tell you when we get there. You did something that was very necessary, though. Okay, now, notice how we're looking at this relationship, the number of World Internet users, all right, and the year. So uh, in the millions, how many millions of Internet users there were in 2001? How many millions in 2002? How many millions in 2003? Yeah, and so on and so forth. Um, notice these numbers beside the years. That's how we're coding the years. We're not going to, to put in x equals 2001 x equals 2002. Instead, we're going to call 2001 year 0, and we're going to call 2002 year 1, and we're going to call 2003 year 2, so that what we're dealing with are the years after 2001, because 2002 is one year after 2001. So, follow me now, follow the cursor. I'm going to push the stat key. And that should give you this menu right here. Now I want to edit. I'm already at edit. So I'm going to, and notice that edit is number one, so I'm going to click one. Now I don't have 
any numbers here, but let's pretend I did. I'm just going to put a bunch of numbers. Oops. And over. You don't have to do this. I just want to show you how to get rid of numbers if you have them. Suppose you have numbers in here. We have to clear out all of the old numbers so that we can put in the new numbers. I am going to use my up arrow until I go all the way up to where L2 is highlighted. Then I'm going to push clear and enter. Notice that makes all of my data go away. Now I'm going to push the left arrow key. I'm going to push the up arrow key so that I can go up to where L1 is highlighted. And again, I'm going to push clear, enter. And that's how I've cleared all the previous data. Now, if you want to, we can pause. You can pause the, uh, the recording by hitting the, uh, the, the double vertical lines. And you can copy down your keystrokes, uh, if you can actually read what they were here. I think they're coded pretty clearly, and if not, you can always watch the video over again. I'll pause for a minute. Okay, now you're back. I am going to enter in my data, and here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to put in the L1 data first, and notice that L1 is really the letter X. These are the years. If you were making X and Y points, these would be the points 0, 494.1, 1, 679.8. All right, so what we really have here is a T table. I'm going to put in all of my X coordinates right here, 0 through 7. So here we go. 0, enter. 1, enter. 2, enter. 3, enter. 4, enter. 5, enter. 6, enter, 7, enter. And then I'm going to use my up arrow key to go back to the number 1, right there. Once you're at number 1, use your right arrow key to jump over to the L2 column and carefully enter your data from here. We need matching data, so whatever number is next to the zero, put that in for the zero. So this is going to be 494.1. Your decimal point is right here. Then I hit Enter. 679.8. Enter. 790.1. Enter. 935.0, don't really need the point zero. Enter. 1047.9, enter. 1217.0, you don't need to bother with point zero. 1402.0. Point one, enter, and one five four two point five, enter. Now, hopefully, I did all this right. Although I never trust myself too much, so I double check. I'm gonna go up, up, up. In six seventy nine point eight and four ninety four point one. Yes. All right, we are ready for the next step. Go ahead, pause the video, write down the keystrokes, and I'll be back. Okay. Now, notice I still have my data in front of me. That's very important. Keep it there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to STAT, 
and you're doing this with your fingers unless you also have one of these computer calculators. I'm going to go back to stat and I'm going to push stat. So there's the menu again. But this time I am not going to push edit. I'm going to use my right arrow key, hit it once, and go over to the calc menu. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to where I see Linreg AX plus B. All right? Probably yours is also at number four. But wherever it is, go to Linreg AX plus B. Okay, now we could have just hit the number four, but another way to do this is actually arrow down to the four and then hit enter. Now this is what I want you to do. I want you to just hit enter, 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 enter. If you have a TI-83, your display doesn't look like this. So all, you're already at where I want to go. So just wait for us. When the rest of you with TI-84s are down here at Calculate, hit Enter. Now, this is the display I want. This tells you what your linear regression is. We're using the slope intercept form of the line. Um, they use the international letter for the number in front of X. We use M in America, but internationally the most common letter is A. And they tell us what A is. This number goes in for the A, and this number goes in for the B. So that our uh, regression equation is y equals 146.9511905x plus 499.23333333. And that's called our best fit or regression equation. Now, the whole purpose for doing this was to look at the data and say, okay, this is what's happened in the past. If this is a predictor of the future, I can predict the future mathematically by using the regression equation to put in any year and find out how many internet users there will, there will be in the world. And this is called prediction. This is the kind of prediction that mathematicians and economists use and sociologists. Now, whether or not your regression equation is a good predictor or not largely depends on your R, which is called the correlational coefficient. That's the reason at the very beginning we went second catalog diagnostic on, is so that your R <clears throat> would appear. Now, R is kind of a complicated number. Um, if the number is very close to 1, and this one is, or if the number is very close to negative 1, that means you're probably going to do a, a, a your, your equation could be a good predictor. On the other hand, <clears throat> if this number is close to 0, if it's a real small positive decimal or a real small negative decimal, your line is going to be a pretty lousy predictor. Okay? So here we have a great predictor. Oh, incidentally, if, if R falls in the middle, like 0, 0, 0.5, say it's 0.522385, that's kind of eh. You wouldn't bet your life on it, but you'd write it down. You, you'd give it a chance. Okay, anyway, here, this is about as close to 1 as you can get. So we're going to have a correlation that is probably a very good correlation and an accurate predictor of the future. All right, we're going to use this to predict the future. So don't make it go away. Copy down your, your keystrokes. Pause the video while you copy down your keystrokes, and I'll meet you right back here.
OK. Now, we're going to do the following. Don't erase any of this, but go to the Y equals key. I want everything to be gone from there, OK? You need to have what I have here, which is nothing typed in. So if it is, hit the clear key. That will make everything go away. Now, if this is how you see your Y equals screen, with nothing written there, I'm pointing instead of moving the cursor so you can see it. What I want you to do is go down here to, ah, no, don't do that first. Go up here to plot one, right here, plot one. Hit your arrow up key and hit enter. And then come down. Notice what that did. That highlighted plot one. Now, this is what I want you to do. I want you to follow the cursor here and I want you to push the zoom key. Now, don't push anything yet. Instead, push your down arrow key and go through, through the different possibilities. Ah, no, back one. Number nine, zoom stat. We're doing statistics right now, so I want zoom stat. I'm going to hit enter there at zoom stat. These are your data points. This is 0, 494.1. This is 1, 679.8. 2, 790.1. 3, 935.0, and so on. This is called a scatter plot. When you have points, we call them data points when we're dealing with regressions. When you have data points that are not connected with a line, you have a scatter plot. The purpose of finding your regression equation is to get a line that will be a good approximation of where those dots are. Notice you can see that they kind of, sort of, not perfectly, but they kind of fall, upon a, fall along a straight line. That means you've got a good correlation going there, a good correlation. They're related. The year and the number of internet users is related. All right, now we want to predict the future. So we need to actually have the line in y equals. I'm going to go back to y equals, and I'm going to make sure my cursor is blinking beside y1. Now, I want you to go to vars and push the vars key. Now, what we need to do is statistics. Notice statistics is here at number 5, so push the 5 key. Excellent. Now, I'm going to go over to EQ, push my right arrow key over to EQ. Now, on my calculator, Reg EQ is right there at number one. But I've seen some people with calculators where Reg EQ is down at the bottom. So look for Reg EQ, and wherever Reg EQ is, hit Enter. You have now entered your equation into Y1. And if you don't believe me, use your left arrow key and go to the very beginning. There it is, 146.9511, one, one, blah, 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 blah. There's the X, plus 499.21, no, 23333, and then a bunch of threes. That's the actual regression equation that we came up with. Now, push graph. Is that cool? That is just so cool. 
our regression equation almost perfectly matches our dots. It won't, uh, regression equations never really perfectly match. But this is really good. Now, okay, we're being asked to do something. Look at part B. Well, first, pause, write down your keystrokes. I'll be here. All right, when you've come back, look at B. Using the function found in part A, estimate the number of world internet users in 2012 and in 2015. Well, we're just going to do 2012. Now remember that 2001 is year 0, 2002 is year 1, 2003 is year 2. So what year will 2012 be? It'll be year 11. Now, notice that this was 0 to 7. That's as far to the right as our graph goes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, maybe 8. It doesn't go all the way to 11. We're going to have to change the window. All right, so I am going to push the button that says Window. Now, I need for my x max to be at least 11, so let's make it 12 so I can see a little bit beyond 11. So I'm going to, what am I going to do? I'm going to arrow down, and I'm going to push 11. Notice that the 11 changes the whatever it was, 7.7. .7. Also, I am guessing that since this arrow keeps going up and up and up, that um, I w probably the numbers in y max are going to keep getting bigger. I have no idea how much. All right, I really don't. So I am just going to change it to a bigger number. Um, how about 2,500? That'll make it a little bit bigger. So I come down here. You know, and I could be wrong, and the world will not end if I'm wrong. 2,500. Okay. Trust me, stay with me here. Now, I'm going to hit graph again. See, and we've continued on up, we've continued to the right, and we've continued on up. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to find out if x is 11, what is y? All right, if the year is year 11, which is 2012, what is what are the number of internet users? Now, if you're back in 2007, you're predicting the future for yourself. You're guessing. Maybe you're a, I just hit my microphone, sorry. Maybe you're a business person, and you make internet stuff, and you need to know about how many worldwide internet users there are going to be. It's important to your profits. All right, so this is actually important to you back in 2007 to look ahead. So we're going to do this. Follow the cursor. I want you to push the second key. And now come up here to the buttons underneath and push the trace key. This gives you your calculate menu. And what I need to do is, for year 11, I need to find the value in this table. So I'm going to choose 1, or hit Enter there at 1. Now it's saying, OK, x equals what? Well, I want x equals 11 for the year. So I'm going to type in 11. Boom, boom. There you go. I'm going to hit enter. And there we go. The number we get is 2115.6964 and I'm sure it goes on forever and ever. All right, but the answer is going to be 2.15.7. 
Notice how all of these are rounded to one decimal place. Now, does that mean there are going to be 2,115 worldwide Internet users? No, there are going to be 2,115 million. That is, there are going to be over 2 billion Internet users. Or, well, from the future, looking from 2007, you say to yourself, wow, there are going to be 2,115,000,000.7 Internet users worldwide. I'm going to build my app or something like that. That's what we're doing, and that would be the answer you're looking for. And you would go through the whole process again if you were looking for how many Internet users there would be in 2015. Okay, this is what we're going to be doing in class. And uh, we'll play with it here a few times as well. And you probably just saw my dog get up and jump off the bed. That was Black Lab Ayla. And um, Blazy, oops, I did it again. I'm sorry. Blazy, again, is laying behind me. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.